our next objective was to talk about how health equity is about more than income and about more than the rich poor, gra uh, poor gap. So a lot of the literature in the past is focused on rich poor gap, but um, there are some other characteristics. Um, so we use this acronym PROGRESS that was developed in 2003 by Tim Evans and Hillary Brown, um, and they state that variations in health can be seen across a number of socially stratifying forces captured by the acronym PROGRESS, which stands for place of residence, religion, occupation, gender, race and ethnicity, education, socioeconomic status, and social networks and social capital. And we've been using um, this acronym since then, and um, some other organizations have also started using this acronym. Um, so over the last 15 years, it's changed a little bit just to include culture and language with race and ethnicity because we think that they are equally important in um, uh, creating or reducing inequities across that characteristic. And they also uh, interact a lot, so there's frequently more than one of those factors that you have to disaggregate. That's true. And in 2012, progress was extend, uh, extended to progress plus to um, allow for consideration of additional um, characteristics that might contribute to disadvantage. So first, additional personal characteristics that don't fit in the eight letters of progress, like age or disability or sexual orientation, but also features of relationships and how those could impact um, inequities and time-dependent relationships, so where a person might not always be considered disadvantaged, but there's a short period of time where they are. So the next uh, objective is to talk about interventions that might help reduce inequities, um, because it's not enough just to talk about the burden of disease. So for each example of, uh, for each uh, factor of progress, we have an example of an intervention that could actually reduce inequities. So for place of residence, uh, for example, um, in Ghana, the population lives quite far from the nearest health facility, and the uh, effective intervention is this community-based health planning and services program that actually reduced child mortality by removing these geographic barriers and helping improve access to healthcare and reducing inequities. For race, ethnicity, culture, and language, an example is that in India, um, immunization rates vary by caste, and some castes are less likely to be immunized. And interventions like mass polio campaigns can actually reduce those caste-based differentials. For occupation, um, certain workers in certain occupations are at higher risk of occupation-related injuries or deaths. And for example, in the United States, legislation to help improve safety for coal miners has contributed to reduced uh, frequency of coal mining disasters. Um, for gender and sex, um, in many cultures, having a son is preferable to having a daughter, and so that's resulted in some unfortunate outcomes for baby girls. But interventions like providing incentives for parents or promoting daughters has actually helped reduce the expression of son preference. For religion, an example is that there are lower immunization rates among certain populations, like Amish populations, which can lead to outbreaks of disease. But um, vaccine information that's provided by trusted community members or trusted medical prof providers can actually increase immunization. For education, the prevalence and length of childhood diarrhea episodes is related to mother's education. So providing education for girls and mothers, especially around food safety, can reduce the risk of diarrhea for infants. For socioeconomic status, the ownership of uh, bed nets for malaria decreases with decreasing household wealth, but uh, providing bed nets for free then actually increases bed net ownership and can reduce um, inequities related to malaria. And social capital, socially isolated people are uh, have higher rates of death than people with a social network. And for example, the Power for Health study found a reduction in depressive symptoms by providing increased support and um, uh, social support for people. Social capital is the uh, last S in the uh, progress that you've uh, just uh, seen, and it's up on the uh, up on the slide. Uh, this is this uh, um, very intangible sort of concept. So there's this uh, great paper by uh, Ken Warren and uh, colleagues on the uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, the Good Health at, at Low Cost, where they looked at a whole variety of places around the world that were very poor that had very good good health, surprisingly, such as Kerala State in India. Uh, and uh, they found that it was the networking amongst individuals in, who were actually uh, oppressed and very, very poor 
but the fact that they got together, that they spent time together, that they were strong in terms of faith groups and religion, uh, that they had uh, newspapers, that they had a lot of sports. And there's been a whole variety of interventions, for example, to increase the involvement in uh, sports and uh, activities around the uh, faith-based uh, and various uh, community activities uh, that actually uh, has a remarkable effect in people helping people with their health and the health in these in, in these areas uh, is, is much better. The big message there is that to take a, the take a message as we'll emphasize again is that uh, uh, the economists tend to spend all their time emphasizing the rich poor gap uh, and fo focusing on the access. Uh, equity is about much more than that. And there's a whole concept called the inverse care law, uh, where it's been clearly shown that uh, not only is the access important, but once they get there, uh, the disadvantaged get very poor care. Uh, and one needs to take into account all of the steps through that uh, funnel of attrition or that staircase, uh, and that one should not uh, just stop at looking at uh, access uh, and money, that all these other aspects are really, really important. And we've got this systematic approach for evaluating it uh, as you put it together within systematic reviews.